Well, hello, friends. Uh, today, we are going to go on a little code tour. Uh, it's been a while since we did a code tour. And today, it's going to be about the IPC system in Serenity, so the inner process communication system. And um, Serenity is broken up into many, many separate programs that make up the desktop environment. And a lot of those programs are divided into a server part and client part. And the server part is usually implemented as like a single server daemon that runs um, and listens on a socket for connections and then clients um, connect to that socket and has the server do something on their behalf, basically. And the uh, biggest and most complex server in the system is the Windows server, which uh, is man uh, manages all the windows and does all the compositing and all the menus and stuff like that. And if we bring up a system monitor here, we can see um, that the Windows Server program is currently running because it draws the mouse cursor and uh, paints every pixel on screen. Um, so everybody who wants to put anything on screen, they have to go through Windows Server. And um, it's actually kind of a nice architecture, I think. So if we look here at the open files in the Windows Server process, we can see here that he has a local socket open for listening and the address is temp portal window so let's look at that in um, with ls here we can see that the temp portal window is a local socket file that um, is accessible only to the window user and the window group so um, that the reason that i can actually connect to the window server as my user account is because I am in the window group. So there's um, we use Unix file system permissions to uh, control which user accounts can even access the windowing system. Um, and you'll note here that the Windows server runs as a separate user as well. So it's not running as my user account. And these are very nice um, privilege separation things that we have going on here. And a lot of that is possible because of our IPC system. So um, let's take a look at how this works. So um, Windows Server is pretty complex. So let's look at, but let, still, let's look at how uh, the protocol is defined. So we're using this domain specific language to define IPC protocols. So here is the Windows Server.ipc file, um, which is part of the Windows Server program. And basically um, every IPC um, pair in the system has a server endpoint and a client endpoint. And they're described in these IPC files that, that describe one endpoint. So this is the server endpoint, and these are all the um, IPC calls you can make to such an endpoint. And the number here is just a unique number uh, because we need to have some kind of unique number that identifies the thing. It's a bit silly, and we could probably do something smarter, but that's currently how it works. So whenever you make an endpoint, you just have to give it a unique number so that um, so that the IPC library can can tell them apart. <laughs> uh, it's just a little idiosyncratic thing. But anyway, um, so these are all of the different APIs, and there are two kinds of APIs. So you can have a uh, synchronous function call, uh, which looks like this. So it has arguments like um, like well, let's say like you have a string. Uh, text and maybe a boolean as well, um, some f call it flag, and a synchronous call is denoted by um, this marker here, and then it points to a set of arguments that constitute the response. So a synchronous function call always waits for a response from the other side. So say that here you will get in response something like response text. This means that when you call the synchronous function call IPC, um, call, then um, the IPC library is not going to return until it has a response for you. So you're guaranteed to get a response. Uh, we also have asynchronous um, notice function calls, uh, which look basically the same, except they just look like that. So there is no uh, response message. So essentially, this part here is the request, and this is the response. And uh, async messages have no response. And when you when you send an asynchronous uh, 
message, then you uh, control is returned to you right away. So it doesn't wait for any response of any kind. And in general, um, I've tried to design everything in such a way that um, clients can make synchronous requests to the server, but whenever uh, the server it wants to say anything to a client, it's always asynchronous because of the nature of the server who has to service many clients, you really don't want him to um, block or stall just because some client is not responding, right? Like you want him to stay always available. So this is the Windows Server IPC file. And here we find messages like create menu or create window, destroy window, set window title, get window title, stuff like that. These are all things that uh, GUI programs can send to the Windows Server. And if we go and look in the window client IPC file, this is the other end of the file. So this endpoint is, um, it's, it, um, it's instantiated in every program that connects to the Windows server. And what that means is that the Windows server can send these messages to its clients. So the Windows server will send messages like mouse move, mouse down, mouse double click, uh, and so on. Um, and also other stuff like update system theme because you change the system color theme. But if you look here at the end of the lines, you'll see that all of these messages are asynchronous. Like um, none of these messages require a response because of that design um, that I mentioned that, that we never ever want the server to block on a client because then all the other clients can get starved for attention. So uh, this is our domain specific language that we use for this. It's extremely simple, um, but let me write out a file from scratch just to show you what it would look like. So we have a foo server, IPC, um, and really you just define an endpoint like my foo server, uh, and you give it a number, so one, two, three, uh, and then you have these to mark the start and end of the endpoint. And then you could define your messages here. So um, cool API, uh, take an integer and we'll call it value. And uh, it gives a response, uh, other response, I don't know, something like that. Async API, and this one takes a string, foo, and just looks like that. This can be our endpoint. And then if we wanted to have uh, the client side for this, it might look like this. Foo client, we'll call it one through four, because they have to be unique. Um, and this will just be like my notification, for example, um, some info, I don't know. And this right here, this is everything you would need to define the um, server and client endpoints. Now, what do we actually do with this? Well, we um, put this into a code generator. So let me save these. Um, oh, did I not save that now? I think I did. Okay, yeah, so the foo server IPC. Let's um, run that through our code generator. So the code generator is in DevTools IPC compiler, IPC compiler. And we can run that on one of these IPC files. And then what it does is it spits out the C++ code. And let's open that up in, uh, we'll just call it foo server endpoint.cpp, or actually .h, because it's really a header file. Um, and let's see if we can open that here. So let's bring up the IPC file so we can compare. And, oh damn, how do you do? Just trying to remember how to shrink a window in Vim. Uh, there we go. Or, oh, dang it. I didn't want to shrink it quite that much. Like that. So, this IPC file that we wrote has now turned into this um, header file here that we can include. And, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but basically um, every one of these messages here becomes a 
it becomes a corresponding class. So the cool API um, is turned into a cool API right here. Cool API, which inherits from IPC message. And what we saw at, top, at the top here was the cool API response. So this is the implied name of this message. And um, every one of these messages uh, has a whole bunch of automatically defined things that the uh, IPC system knows to ask for. So uh, the way that you would end up using this is uh, say that you wanted to, let's see, um, uh, 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 cool CP. Um, say that you wanted to send a cool API uh, message to your peer, right, to the server. So then say that you have the server in um, a variable called server. So what you would do is you would say server post message. And then uh, I think it's messages, um, food server, cool API. And then we have to pass an i32 value. So you would say like one, two, three, four, five, or I don't know, 99, some cool number. Um, or actually, this is not going to work because this is a synchronous API. So we cannot use post message here. Post message is only for asynchronous messages. So this would work for the async API. Hello, friends. That's how you would use an async API. But uh, for using the synchronous API, we have to use the send sync function. And it looks like this. So messages, foo server, uh, cool API. And then you put your um, parameters, so 99. And this would actually return to you a response object. So this is how you use it. Um, and basically, what you get back here, like I was saying earlier, it's not going to return from SendSync until we've received a response from the other side. So by the time we get control back, response now contains one of these things. So that will be a cool, a cool API response object. So let's go and look at how um, post message and send sync are implemented. So these are in the um, uh, libipc server connection class. So when uh, this is a bit, it's a little bit complicated, but basically the way that you instantiate uh, one of these endpoints, like the way that we instantiate the Windows server um, endpoint on the client side, so that is in libgui Windows server connection which is one of these objects that implements an endpoint. So um, we inherit from IPC server connection and we pass the endpoints as template parameters. And then we also inherit from the client endpoint and that um, sets everything up so that we can, actually you can see here that the way that we receive messages from the system is that they are um, given to us through these virtual function calls. So whenever um, the Windows server sends a message to us, uh, it's converted into a virtual function call and we receive control in this handle function. So everything that you really need to do after you've written that, um, after you've written this file, is that you need to create a class that has a bunch of these handle functions that just take the right message type, one for each message in your endpoint. And um, in this case, all of these are async, so it's not, and they don't have any return value. But if you go look at the server side of it in the Windows Server client connection class, so this is the, the other side. So the Windows Server client connection inherits from IPC client connection, and it's a Windows Server endpoint, and it also inherits from Windows Server endpoint. Um, and then we have all the handle functions here as well. And then these are um, these are called whenever a message comes in from one of the clients, uh, 
Um, and the handle function, if it's a synchronous function, then it has a return value and it's expected to return a response message, right? Um, but it's an own putter, so it can also return null if something is wrong, for example, and it doesn't want to respond. Um, so if we look in some, um, some one of these, like set full screen, for example, which um, a Windows Server client might tell the Windows Server that he wants some window to be full screen, then uh, you see here that it's handle and then this message type, and we're expected to give a set full screen response. So we look up the window um, using the window ID and the message, and then um, if something is wrong with the window ID, then we return null pointer, uh, telling the IPC system to uh, inform, or actually we'll just disconnect the client, say, say that he's misbehaving and disconnect him. Um, otherwise, we set the full screen and return an empty response. So this is really just so that uh, the client who makes this API call gets some kind of feedback on how it went. Um, but anyway, that, that's how that works. But uh, we, I wanted to show you how the uh, post message and send sync are implemented. So that will be in server connection. This is how, this is a connection to the server. Um, so this is a client side object. And when we call post message, for example, what we do is we get one of these IPC messages. So that would be, uh, for, ex for example, a in this case, uh, an async API message. So it's um, this object right here. So we're passing one of these guys in and we can see here that the first thing we do is we call encode on it. And encode is a piece of generated code. We can actually find it right here. If we scroll down a little bit, we see encode. So um, this is where the generated code creates a message buffer, which is a serialized um, version of the entire uh, message. So basically it takes all of the input parameters that you gave this message, and then it just turns them into a byte string or a byte array. And then that's, um, and we, we, we already have like, um, various primitive types. So if you look in IPC encoder, we can see that it supports all kinds of types here, like all the primitives, but also stuff like string view, string URL, dictionary vector, uh, optional, stuff like that. And um, you can actually add more types to it as well um, through um, uh, by, by using a template. But Basically, we call encode, and that gives us a byte buffer that has a serialized version of the message, and then we write that serialized message on the uh, connection local socket. So this will then be received on the other side in the client connection object. So let's open that. Now we're in um, the foo server or Windows server, if you will, and we end up in a function called drain messages from client. So whenever there is some pending data on the local socket file descriptor that, that um, manages this one client, then we end up here. And then what we do is we just receive on that socket and accumulate um, as many bytes as we can, basically. Because um, Sometimes, sometimes like more messages will kind of buffer up because maybe you're very busy and you didn't have a chance to um, get to the next client yet. And maybe, maybe he's like sending you more messages than you can process right now. So they will just build up in a buffer, but eventually we'll get here and um, grab all the messages that we can asking, just asking the kernel for all the messages we can get. And then, um, this is just a loop that, that um, calls receive over and over until we run out of data. And then what we do is uh, we call uh, endpoint decode message. And endpoint is a template parameter to the client connection object. So this is the kind of endpoint that this client connection represents. So in the foo server program, this would be the foo server endpoint. Um, which is right here. So it's an IPC endpoint. And this IPC endpoint um, has, 
uh, let's see, so it has a decode message function, right? So what we do when we receive a message from a client, we pass the message, like the raw message buffer into this function uh, in our endpoint and it will, uh, it will do some sanity checks like to check that it has like the right endpoint number because every IPC message is proceed it has like the endpoint number at the header so that that tells us that okay this is an IPC message for me um, and then it will look at the message ID which comes after the endpoint ID um, and it just tells you what kind of message is this right and then we switch on the message ID um, and then in this case, we have these three message IDs. So we have the cool API, the cool API response, and async API. So th these are the three messages that we know about. And they will just be um, like hard-coded enums up here. So they're like one, two, and three. There's nothing special. That'll just be the message ID. And um, depending on what the message ID is in the incoming buffer that we got, we call the appropriate um, decode function for the class whose message ID we're decoding. So in this case, we were sending an async API, right? So we would call async API decode. So if we look at class async API, um, it will call the decode function here. So this guy right here, and what this does is uh, it takes the input stream and just fetches um, bytes from it uh, in, in whatever format the IPC message is defined as. So um, here we just we just assume that it has the correct layout, and we in this case we're expecting it to have a string. So what we do is we create a string on the stack here, and then we call um, decode, passing the string as a reference. And if you have more arguments, then we'll just do more decode calls. But essentially, if it's a valid encoded message, then we'll return it as an async API object. So you'll come out of the, where is that? Um, drain messages from client. Here, decode message, if it returns null, that means that this message was not uh, decodable by the endpoint. So the endpoint does not recognize this message. This is, um, like a, a bug or something went wrong, we got a message we were not expecting. Uh, and what we normally do is we just say, this is a misbehaving client and we'll just um, drop him, like disconnect him uh, and not talk to him anymore because this IPC pr protocol in the system, it expects 100% correctness at all times. Like there's no leniency for um, incorrect communication. So, um, Oh, but if we are able to decode the message, then what we do next is we call um, endpoint handle, and then we pass the message. So uh, let's see where we end up with that handle. So this is also generated. So um, when you call endpoint handle, then the endpoint now has a um, proper full IPC message object. In this case, it's um, an async API that we've regenerated from the serialized buffer. And we switch on the message ID. And in our case, we end up here. This is an async API message ID. So we call handle, but with the message static casted to this type. And this is how we actually call the correct handle function. So handle is um, like in Windows Server, for example. In the Windows Server client connection, we had all of these, all of these handle functions here, right? And they're all uh, virtual because we're calling them on the endpoint, or rather, the endpoint calls handle on itself, and then it's a virtual dispatch to the subclass of the endpoint, because we're always subclassing the endpoint um, to implement the the handlers. And yeah, so that's how we end up in the handle stuff. And um, when we're doing a synchronous message, because that was async. So once you once you called handle um, on an async message, like set window progress here, for example, then 
And this handler, you just do whatever you want and then you can return when you're done. You don't have to send a message back or anything because this is async. So by the time by the time we're here, the client might already be doing other stuff anyway. Like he's not waiting for us to respond for any reason. Um, if we do want to communicate something back to the client uh, after handling one of his asynchronous messages, then we have to send him uh, a new message. So like we can send an, an async message back to him. That's fine. But well, the IPC system does not give you a way to provide a response to an async message because that doesn't make sense. So uh, let's look at synchronous messages. So the way that synchronous messages work is they are sent just the same as the async ones. The, the main difference here is that after we send a synchronous message, I'll show you, send sync. Um, so we post it just like we posted the async messages, but then immediately after we call wait for specific message. And this is where we go into a loop. You'll notice here, by the way, that we're passing the request types response type type. Um, so if we look at cool API, which was our synchronous API here, uh, this guy right here, cool API class, you'll notice that he has a type def class cool API response as his response type. And that means that um, when you're calling send sync with cool API as your request type, then we will call in turn uh, wait for a specific message with the cool API response as the template um, argument here. So essentially we're saying wait for a specific message with the type cool API response. And this function here then is templated so it will return a own putter to a cool API response. Um, and then what this function does, it, it's just an infinite loop that uh, fetches messages from the other side repeatedly until it encounters the uh, kind of message that we're looking for. And we're able to um, identify the message that we're looking for because we know the type, like the C++ type of the expected message. So we can actually look up the message ID of the expected type by calling a static message ID on the message type. And this is also generated. So if we're looking for the cool API response in this case, and we can see that the generated code here says static message ID is message ID cool API response. So essentially, this function will just loop and check if any of the incoming messages have the static message ID. And by the way, here, we actually do a check before we go into the loop, we do a check if we already have a buffered message with this ID. If so, we don't start looping. Um, that's why this occurs twice. But uh, one thing is that while we are waiting for a response, it is possible for the other side to send us something unrelated, right? Because um, maybe, maybe we were sending him something uh, where we want a synchronous response, but maybe while we were doing that, he thought it was a good idea to send us something. Uh, and then you could deadlock there. But what we do is um, after we send a synchronous request, we accept everything that comes in, but we just buffer it. So we're just uh, if we get something unrelated, we're just buffering uh, that. We're putting that in this unprocessed messages vector, um, which is just a vector of message objects. And we will actually go through those messages after um, after we've gotten the response that we're waiting for, we'll handle the response that we're waiting for, and then we will deal with all of those or any of those unprocessed messages that we got that we were not waiting for. So that's essentially how it works. So um, sending an asynchronous message, just use post message, which just writes it to the file descriptor right away after uh, encoding or serializing it. But if it's a synchronous message, use send sync and provide, um, provide the type that you're sending as a request type here so that we can figure out the response type. And, uh, and yeah, then we'll, then we'll give you back the response in a pointer. So that's how that works. Um, and I guess,
there's probably like many different little details about this, but the, um, if we go and look at the libipc directory, we can see that, or hold on, um, the h is, let's just see the h files. So the libipc is not that complicated. It has a server connection template and a client connection template. Those are the two um, sides that we've talked about. So client connection is the server side object, represents a connection with a client. And server connection is a client side object, represents a connection with a server. And then we have decoder and encoder, which are um, serializer and deserializer of IPC messages. We have the message class, which is um, the base class of all of these messages that get generated by the code generator. And then endpoint is um, it's like a set of messages. So um, you usually have one endpoint uh, in the server and one endpoint in the client, right? Then the endpoints are what you define in the IPC files. And then we also have dictionary, which is just um, sort of a key value type that you can, for convenience, that you can pass. Um, but these are really the, the basic concepts of the IPC library. And if you are more interested in this, I definitely invite you to look into how it works. And we didn't really look at the code generator, but it's a C++ program. It's not terribly complicated. It's about 500 lines. And it just um, parses this, these IPC files. So when the server IPC parses like this type of file and um, turns it into uh, an endpoint struct, which has a vector of messages. And then each message is um, a set of inputs and outputs. And um, then we have the, the inputs and outputs are a parameter vector. So uh, what kind of type, what kind of name, stuff like that. But it's, it's really not that complicated if you break it into individual parts. So I really invite you to go and look at the code if you find this type of stuff interesting. Um, I think there are many improvements that can be made to the system, but at the same time, I am really happy with uh, how far it's gotten because um, it is quite easy and painless to add new IPC services to the system at this point because um, you don't have to think a lot about data marshalling and stuff like that, but you can just focus on implementing your um, your high level of stuff. So that's really good. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I was talking talking so much. Um, I hope that that uh, this was a uh, good intro to how how this stuff works. And uh, thank you for watching this little code tour and. I will see you next time, I guess. So, thanks. Bye.